protect your DNA. BioPQQ can promote formation of new mitochondria. InfoWarsStore.com It's Sunday, October 12th, 2014, as we issue this emergency alert report. It has now been confirmed in Dallas, Texas, the site of patient Zero's death last week. A nurse who was treating him at the Presbyterian Medical Center in Dallas, Texas, has tested positive for contracting Ebola, the deadly virus, ravaging hundreds of thousands of people right now, potentially could infect millions in Africa, and now it has spread in the United States just as it spread last week to another nurse, a healthcare worker in Madrid, Spain. So there are several big questions, obviously, here and several big issues. Why, for the first time ever, are they bringing Ebola patients into Western countries like Spain and the United States? Why, when other nations like England, France, uh, and Arab countries as well have blocked flights out of countries being ravaged by Ebola. Why has the United States not halted flights and is still not even doing basic screening at major airports? Another big question, why did Obama lie to us and say virtually no chance it would come here? Why did the CDC say, hey, we can't control the border uh, and uh, we don't think it's going to spread? Why did the head uh, of the Texas Medical Board come out last week and say that there was basically zero chance Ebola could spread when we know it's been spreading like wildfire in Africa. And many scientists, many virologists, even in the New York Times, have come out and said it may have already begun to go somewhat airborne. So to be clear, there is now an official outbreak of Ebola in the United States. And if this healthcare worker was in a full hazmat suit, you better believe that the children, the wife, the neighbors, the children at the school where these other children went are all obviously in danger. And I think it's safe to say what we said a week and a half ago when this news first broke. The odds are this has spread to wider groups of people. And patient zero, who's now dead, Thomas Eric Duncan, who died last Wednesday, is not the only one. And now that speculation has been confirmed. By the news that a healthcare worker in Texas has tested preliminarily, preliminarily positive for infection with Ebola virus. CNN headline, Texas nurse test positive for Ebola, would be first Ebola transmission in the United States. Dallas Morning News, healthcare worker at Presbyterian Hospital in Dallas, test positive for Ebola. CDC protocol breached in treating Ebola patient, Associated Press. And that's the big point that has to be made here out of all these important issues. The default position of not bringing Ebola patients into the United States, that was violated for the first time when I pointed this out, when other people pointed this out, when the Drudge Report pointed this out. Mainstream media demonized us and criticized us and said, how dare you not want to bring Ebola patients here? You must be racist. How dare you fearmonger and say people could be coming across the border with it? Well, now a nurse who is in full hazmat gear has contracted it at the hospital where this person was for a week. And remember, they didn't clean the ambulance for days. They sent some of the kids to school for days, even after they knew patient zero, who's now dead, had Ebola. Evidence is also mounting that the CDC is lying to the American people. Foreign press reported that Mr. Duncan had died a day before and that the CDC was basically covering it up, and that forced them the next day to claim that he died Wednesday morning. There's major evidence that we're being lied to. Ebola patients are being brought in. They're not following proper protocols, and it's spreading. And when we point out that the southern border should be highly controlled, as well as the northern border, and that everyone who was on this flight with him should be put in containment, we're called conspiracy theorists for following the default 
federal law. So clearly, elements of our government want this crisis to get out of control. The good news is the head of Southcom, the U.S. military branch that oversees Central and South American U.S. interests, came out last week and said the big threat is Ebola coming across the southern border. Many countries in the Western Hemisphere have about no ability to deal with an Ebola outbreak. We have a lot of West Africans of the Homeland Security folks uh, doing their work on our southwest border. Of the number of people they, they capture, a very large percentage of them are, are uh, West African. I was down in Costa Rica a couple of weeks ago talking to our uh, embassy personnel. One of them relayed a story to me. But there were uh, five or six black guys that were there at the border waiting in line to pass into uh, Nicaragua and then on the way north. And the embassy person walked over and just asked who they were. And they said, well, we're from Liberia. Uh, been on the road about a week. And we're on the way to New York City. Illegally. So they're on the network. They had flown into, I think, Trinidad. And then met up with the traffickers. And now they're on the way in. Uh, they could have made it to New York City and still be within the incubation period of, of uh, Ebola that if, if it, there's an outbreak in the Caribbean, particularly or in Central America, it will, it will make the 68,000 unaccompanied children, I think, look like uh, a small problem. The UN estimates run from 1.4 million to 5 million people in Africa alone by December who will contract Ebola. Undoubtedly, many of them will try to flee to the West. Other countries, including African nations, are not letting them in because that's default common sense. So now the U.S. is the dumping ground of people who have contracted Ebola, and now it's confirmed to be spreading in the United States. We the people have to take action. Call Congress, call the media, call the White House, call the CDC, and say, listen, you follow federal law, you follow the defaults, and you quarantine the people that have been in contact. You shut that border, you stop those flights, or you will be held accountable when this spreads and they're quarantining hundreds of thousands or millions of U.S. citizens and North Americans. This appears to be a false flag that they've bare minimum allowed to spiral out of control as a pretext for more medical tyranny here in the United States and worldwide. Finally, I want to leave you with a clip that our reporters got last week with the head of the Texas Health and Human Services Commission, Executive Commissioner Kyle Janik, saying to the legislature that there's zero danger even if Ebola was on the table right in front of him. It's clear they're trying to pacify the public and cover up what's happening, not to stop panic, but to stop a real response. There is virtually no risk. You can push me as far as you want to say zero. I will not say zero. It's knowing what I know, there is, there is zero risk. I said it, there it is, I shouldn't say that. There's no risk, there's no risk. Um, Ebola virus could be sitting there, and if I'm touching it with unbroken skin, it's not a risk. Well, folks, we've put the facts out here. We've been proven right again. Now it's up to you to take action and raise the alarm. We'll take you back now to the radio studio where David Knight is live breaking this down and taking your phone calls right here in Austin, Texas and worldwide. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure the sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee, and it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend, you will be supporting a free press, all the while enjoying a truly great-tasting cup of my favorite coffee. Available at InfoWarsLife.com.